person up is Jan Xie. He is going to speak on Ethereum on Ruby. Welcome, Jan. Thank you. So allow me to take a picture. Okay. So thank you for coming to this talk. And it's time for some simple stuff, I think. I believe the organizer arranged me after Vlad for some reason. <laughs> so yeah. Okay, in, in, the next, in the next 15 minutes, I'll introduce you to Ethereum on Ruby, which is the intersection of Ethereum community and Ruby community. Oh, yeah. Uh, before that, a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Xie Hanjian, and I'm an Ethereum developer. I, in, in last year, I created the Ruby Ethereum project, which is a full implementation of Ethereum in Ruby, and I'm also working on Pi Ethereum. And uh, I'm running a blockchain technology startup named Cryptape, and we, we are building an underlying permission ledger, and we also providing some consultancies to our customers. And during our daily job, we build some tools to help we develop dApps. Okay, so a little bit about Ruby. Ruby is a language created by a Japanese named Yukihiro Matsumoto, whose nickname is Mats. And uh, the core principle of Ruby language, I think you can get from this guy's face, right? That's happiness. So, Ru Ruby is a language designed for human. It, it, it's very focused on readability. So, in, in one of his talk, in one of Matt's talk, the, the presentation title is optimized for programmer happiness. So, if you uh, make a spectrum of languages, in, in the one side, maybe, maybe WASP, right? <laughs> ASM, and in, in the other side is Ruby, I believe. So it's all optimized for human, and it, it, the, the source code written in Ruby is, will read very naturally, and we will see that later. And the other good point of Ruby is flexibility. So a lot of people is using Ruby to define internal DSL, the main specific language. So the, the most famous one is Rails, right? So Rails is a uh, DSL for web development, and I believe we can also use Ruby to define some DSL for smart contract. Oh. So, we created TEST, a uh, testing and deployment framework for smart contract. Uh, after you install TEST, you can open your console and type some command line like this, like test new, big thing. Big thing is the name of your next big project, okay? And this command will generate you a lot of files and directories. Uh, oh. And among the directories, the most important one are contracts and tests. Contracts will include the generated contract template and tests will include the We'll have the uh, generated test template. And then you can do test generate token. Token is the name of your smart contract. So you can name it whatever, but we use token, for example. And here's the, here's the generated file. In the, on your left side, you can see that's a Solidity contract. It's empty. And on your right hand is the generated test for the left side smart contract. And the generated test is very simple. It, it, it includes uh, an example test. So it just has a third, a third uh, equation of assert that the contract address is not new, assert that the contract has been deployed. OK? So this is just generated out from the tool. Okay, before we jump into a real 
smart contract test, uh, you need to know some uh, tools at your hand. You can use these keywords in your test. So we have some, we have some tools related to context. Uh, you, can, you, you have access to state. State is a collection of accounts. And you have access to head. Head is the, the, the most recent block of the chain, the, the current block. And you have access to contract. Contract is the Ruby object uh, the test framework built for you. Uh, it's compiled from the Solidity contract. It, it, uh, it extracts the ABI interface from the contract, and it, uh, the test framework will build the contract object for you, so you can use the object to do, every, to do all kinds of things on the contract. And you can uh, take some actions, so you can transfer uh, balance, you can transfer user between accounts. You can deploy uh, contracts to the state. Uh, deploy is not implemented yet, so it's in gray. Uh, and you can call all kinds of functions on the contract object. And there are, there are some pre-generated, randomly generated accounts. Uh, you can reference to them by using private keys, pop keys, addresses, and as a tester yourself, you can reference to your own private key using private key, pub key, and address. And we also define aliases to these randomly generated accounts. So you can use the well-known names like Alice, Bob, Carol to reference to those generated accounts. So here's a real test. Uh, in the left, it's a standard token contract. The token contract has issue function, transfer function, and get balance. And on your right hand is the test for the corresponding contract. And you can see at, at the first line, we, we use uh, contract.issue Bob 100. And that means um, we invoke the issue function to issue Bob 100 tokens. And then we transfer Carol 90 tokens from Bob. And then we make sure that the, uh, the Carol's account has 19 token, tokens in it. And then we, we do the transfer again. We, we, we want to make sure that it can be done if there is some exceptions. So in, uh, in the contract test, you can you can find one thing is that it's really, the test is really compact, right? You, you don't, there's no asynchronous in this test. There's no callbacks. There's no mining. You don't need to do that. You just write the test and you run the test just, just like you do in Java or C++. It will run in, in, uh, instantly and give you feedback. So uh, we find this will uh, speed up your development cycle largely because now you can tweak with the contract on the left side and then you just run your test and you boom get get the result from your from your code you you, you just written in instantly and when there's something wrong you can go back to your code and do something this feedback circle is much shorter than if you deploy contract to testnet or if you use other things. And there's better stuff. What if, what if you forget to write the first line, you forget to issue Bob 100 tokens at first, but you just transfer Carol? Now you will, you will get a failure in test, then, then what do you do? How do you debugger? How do you debug this problem? In, in traditional programming context, we may find, we may open some debugger, right? But someone said, logger is the ultimate debugger. I, I, I don't remember whom. And we find that in, in Solidity, we have log. Although the log is some 
is some kind different than the logger's log in traditional programming world, but there's logger, right? So we can add a log. We can write a log in contract, and the test framework, when, when you're running the, the test, the test framework will print the log in your console so you can know what's happening in your contract. You can know, you can know immediately if the address two is correct passed in, right? You can do, do all kinds of things to inspect your contract. And this is very import, important for, for debugging, I believe. And in test by default, uh, logs will be print to console, but events won't, although events are also some kinds of logs. But you can trick those options to enable events printing. So if you set print events to true, then if, you, if there's an event in your contract, you will see l the below lines like this in your console. And here you can see uh, the issue from account and amount. And better, TESS is a language agnostic framework, so it also supports Serpent. Uh, I'm, I, I don't know how many Serpent developers here, but whoa, Vitalik! <laughs> <laughs> OK, but Serpent is uh, also a very good smart contract language. Yeah. So the test is possible because we created Ruby Serum, which is a full implementation of the Serum protocol. It, it includes a lot of things. So what behind test is test will compile the contracts and run the bytecode on Ruby SAM virtual machine. And it doesn't involve any mining and block creation. It just runs the code on VM. That's very simple, right? So, so you can get the in instantaneous feedback. And uh, at this time, Ruby SAM has evolved into many, has inspired many projects. So inside, it, uh, Inside Ruby Sermon, we have we have uh, modules uh, in charge of data, like block transaction, etc. And EVM, it's a full implementation of EVM. Uh, so there's people using the code inside Ruby Sermon to extract ABI from contract. And there are also utilities like address, public key, private key. They are very convenient tools to help you convert uh, data between address, public key, and private key. And Ruby Serum also has many dependencies like RLP, ESH, Serpent, and SECP. And based on Ruby Serum, we are now cr building REST. REST is uh, a full Ruby client. So it's some kind of like uh, GoE Serum. So besides Ruby Serum, we also need uh, Ruby Dev P2P, the network layer. Com combine the network layer with Ruby Serum, we, we can build REST. And then we have TEST, the testing framework. And we have Ruby ETH. Ruby ETH is a small tool extracted from, not extracted, but built based on Ruby Serum to help you create and sign transactions. And we have East JSON RPC, which is a JSON RPC client talk to uh, Ethereum server, uh, Ethereum node. And there are some projects extracted from Ruby Ethereum. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs>